Good morning, beloved. Once you know the tactics and strategies of the adversary, you can be more aware and prevent yourself from getting involved and trapped and meshed in a narcissist's life, okay? One of the narcissism 101 is the cycle. They follow a pattern. They follow patterns in life. You will see this, once you see this, once you know this, you will see this in your relationships, you'll see this in your family, you'll see this in your workplace, you'll see these narcissistic strategies. And number one is the pattern is idealization, devaluation, and discard. Even if they don't fully discard you, the idealization, idealization part of the stage is called love bombing. Love bombing is one of their favorite strategies for hooking you. Inordinate displays, inordinate levels of admiration, idealization, gr aggrandizement that they direct towards you, okay? And the thing to remember about a narcissist is they don't have an essence. They don't have a being of their own. Idealization actually has to do with mirroring back to you who you are. They're mirroring back to you who you are and what you desire and the desires of your heart. So something that really helps to prevent them is making sure that you've done your healing before you get in a relationship. Making sure that you have your own sense of well-being, your own sense of personhood, your own sense of affirmation. A lot of times these predators, these parasites, swoop in during times that you are unoccupied, during times that you are not busy, during times right after something happened, like a, the loss of a job, the breakup of another relationship, the uh, loss of a loved one, and you are in an unoccupied position, you are down and out, they come along looking like a pick-me-up and they have recognized that you are the real deal. They have recognized that you do have all of these wonderful attributes you see seen for the first time in your life. You feel like you're visible. You finally feel like someone gets you. They do get you and they're out to get you. And they tell you things like, I never thought I would meet anyone like you. Yes, they did, but it's true. I mean, anyone who had real love would feel that way for you in the beginning and would feel that way for you in the middle and would be able to endure in that feeling, but they don't have real love. They're coming to you for your attributes. They're coming to you for your positives. And they will they will flatter you, okay? Remember this, flattery is something that someone does towards you for their benefit. Flattery is not, a, and compliments are not the same thing. Flattery is what manipulators, narcissists, psychopaths, sociopaths, do to, to you to get something from you, to draw you into their circle. They will flatter you, tell you how attractive you are, tell you what a good man you are. I never thought I'd meet a man like you or tell you what a good woman you are. Whatever, whichever sex you are, they it works. Remember, a narcissist and a Jezebel spirit are the same thing. And it is virtually sexless because it only seeks supply. It does not, the narcissist does not identify the proper roles and responsibilities of male and female, okay? Whew, <laughs> and uh, for example, a narcissistic man will treat a woman as a source of supply, not realizing that biblically speaking, he is supposed to be her, her covering, her protection, her supply of well-being and affirmation and edification. He only wants one way flow to him. That's not, that's not masculine, that's feminine, okay? And the love bombing tactic is 
something to really look out for. Hey, hey, whoa, whoa, hey, hey, that's a little too much. That's not who I am. I'm not that great. So don't lean into it. When you lean into it, they are, are, are formulating a condition of dependence. And then when they devalue you, they begin to withdraw all this positive energy that they've put your way, all these positive emotions, all the positive thoughts, they begin to stop feeding you and you begin to collapse because they, they were getting you dependent on their supply of false love. This is almost, a narcissist is almost like a drug dealer who drug dealers will give people free samples to get them hooked on their product and then they'll pull back the free samples and they will get people to begin to pay. They get people to begin to crave. They get people to begin to ravenously go around selling stuff and backstabbing people and borrowing money to get that product again to meet the cravings of their mind, and their emotions, and even their body. The narcissist works like a drug dealer. They do not intend and cannot give you a genuine, consistent supply of love because they do not have it. Also in the love bombing or the idealization phase, they are crazy about you, but they're crazy, they're, not, they're crazy about their idealized version of you. They are very fantasy oriented. They are not reality based. See, they they are propping you up, but they're seeing a version of you that you didn't claim to be that man or that woman. You didn't claim to be that good looking, but they're, that's what they're seeing. They're falling in love with a fantasy. And the moments that you begin to show that you are not this super idealized version of you that they are saying you are, that's when they devalue you. Now, a person with authentic love is gonna wanna come and not meet a fantasy, but meet the real you and deal with the real you and love the real you, love you for you. So you have, we have to realize that and this, the idealization, the devalue and discard will repeat in the relationship, even if you stay in it. And every time you go through this cycle, you are lowered down to a lower level. And when you're idealized again, you're never raised to the initial level. And it, it comes to a place where if you looked at a healthy relationship as starting a, on a baseline, or like a continuum or a baseline, and the baseline being how it's supposed to work, you not only fall in their eyes from the idealized version, you hit the baseline level, the levels that a healthy relationship can exist on, and they continue the cycle below the baseline. So you're not even getting, you're not getting the the actual ingredients to keep a healthy relationship alive, but you're not even getting the health, you're not getting the ingredients to keep an unhealthy relationship alive. And you continue to lower and lower and lower until there's absolutely nothing left in you and they've hollowed you out and you can't even remember what your baseline state was anymore because they put you in that position. So be very cautious about over, over displays of affection, over displays of admir admiration, over uh, the, the, the rapidity, the rapidness of which they're wanting to move will give red flags that, hey, <laughs> healthy folks don't make all these assumptions and assertions in this time period because the narcissist begins with you at where a healthy relationship ends. Your, your beginning is the best part of the relationship. You will not see a better part of the relationship than the beginning. And that's where you should be arriving at after you followed all the steps of a healthy relationships. The narcissist says disordered steps. They give you the complete open communication at the point they don't know you. They give you all this affirmation and all this praise when you haven't done anything yet to get you to start doing something. Once you've done things that merit how they love bombed you in the beginning, they begin to devalue you because now they have you. It's a, This is all power and control. 
There's no real love in a, in a narcissistic relationship because in love, there's no competition. There's no conquest for power and control. To them, it's all about power and control. So be very wary of falling into the cycle of idealization, devalue, and discard. Amen.